called me the call to worship this morning. Our God hears our prayers. Our God blesses us with abundance. Our God's love and covenant are steadfast and true.
Smith. She's graduating May 17th at 4 p.m. St. John's High School. Hey, you are invited to come join us and her family in celebrating her high school career. A party. Immediately following graduation at the Smith House, 609 East 5th Street. So you all invited to uh, come and join and celebrate with Tia. Uh, we have a guest speaker coming here on uh, May 11th at 9.30. And I hope everybody comes. Bring all your friends. Uh, his name is Matt Johnson. He's coming from um, the Youthville, which is called um, something else. Ember. Ember Hook. Also have an invitation from um, Chelsea. For all those young folks who'd like to go to camp, she's going to be one of the camp counselors. Uh, hopefully it's in, it's in the bulletin. Today is Native American Ministries Sunday. Uh, if you'd like to contribute to a Native American Ministries, uh, there's a, an end quote on the level for you. All right, now, uh, our other cares Someone's back from a knee suit, from a knee operation, and I'm sure he's back to a. I've got a. Surgery went well, doing good. Go back for a uh, post op this Thursday, or Wednesday. Don't plan on running any two mile running soon. <laughs>
God, we have made our journey today to this place, your house of worship, your house of prayer. Thank you for safe travel and the fellowship we find here among our sisters and brothers in Christ. For those who have not found their way to you at this time, we ask blessings on their journeys and all of our journeys. Father, we are all pilgrims on the path on this earth. We are on a journey that takes us straight to your heart. Help us to know that though the road may be tough, though the road may be rough in spots, we are never left alone along the way. The road of life sometimes seems lonely, O oh God. Oftentimes we are tempted to abandon the journey or to take the path of least resistance. Forgive us when we have not lived up to the challenges you have given us in this life. Forgive us when we retreated from the difficulties, the difficult journeys, difficult paths, just forgive us, Lord. Remind us, Lord, that you hear our pleas, and you hear our cries, and you now despairs, and you now discomforts. You know when we are up against the brick wall. Reassure us that you are always with us. You will never leave us. You are always walking alongside us wherever we go. Father, we ask a special blessing this morning on each and every person who is here. We ask that you would bless us. We thank you for bringing us this far along the road. We thank you for our health and our strength. We thank you for the doctors and caregivers who take care of us and others. We ask a blessing on all those in government, all those in charge of our churches, all those in our churches. Lord, we ask that you increase the numbers, bring more and more people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Bring them to our church. Bless each and every one of us today, and this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me to hymn 316, He Grows. 316. 316.
nice to be here on another Resurrection Day. Every Sunday is a Resurrection Day for the Christian. Uh, please turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. And if you're using the Pew Bible, it is found on page 222. 1 Peter 1, 17 through 23. Listen to the word of God. And if you invoke as your father, him who judges each one impartially, according to his deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your fathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest at the end of the times for your sake. Through him you have confidence in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere love of the brethren, love one another earnestly from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. Please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Acts. Book of Acts. <coughs> Acts chapter 2, verses 14a, and then 36 through 41. Acts chapter 2, verses 14, and it's found on page 114 of the Pew Bible, in the New Testament section. Page 114, Acts 2, 14, and 36 through 41. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Go to 36, 341, 36. Let all the house of Israel therefore know assuredly that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you and to your children and to all that are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other words and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and the prayer. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. From that, uh, those two passages, um, we heard Peter, and I want to ask you the question that uh, the people asked at that time when Peter was preaching. What shall I do? What shall we do? Well, one of the most convincing proofs that the church of Jesus Christ and Christianity is true is that after 2,000 years, the church is still here, the church is still alive, the church will always be alive. And the existence of the church is assured, guaranteed by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For other religions, you can go.
go to certain places today, and you can see a tomb, and the, their religious leader is lying in there. And one of the tombs, I think they, they cut a hole in it, and they put a, a, a plexiglass or a glass, and you can see the skeleton, or part of the skeleton of uh, their religious leader. Not with us. But as we have an empty tomb, an empty tomb is there to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that our Savior lived. And the church came out of the strength of the disciples who witnessed the risen Jesus Christ. And they were empowered by the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came, and these men who were hiding out, and just afraid to go out in the open, afraid to mention the name of Jesus Christ, they became powerful men, and they preached. And here on the day of Pentecost, uh, Peter preached, and there were 3,000 souls saved. 3,000 people. Can you imagine that? <coughs> Now, I know we have a hard time hearing me, and it's just a few of us in a small church. Imagine 3,000 people being able to hear Peter preach, and the power of the Holy Spirit so convicted them that they wanted to know, what shall we do? Well, we follow this great person, Jesus Christ, and we want to know who is Jesus Christ. And Peter's going to give us a few clues in his sermon on the day of Pentecost. He stood up boldly and proclaimed to a skeptical crowd, to a crowd that were angry, and a crowd who wanted to see a crucifixion. Maybe they wanted to see a few more. I mean, that was just their highlights in those days, looking at a crucifixion. And he came with the power of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost. And he preached to this hostile crowd of multinational people. People who came from all corners of the earth. And as he preached, each person heard Peter speaking in their own native town. He was speaking words and the Holy Spirit was taking it and interpreting it each and every per person there in their own language. And in Acts 2.36, Peter said, Therefore let the whole house of Israel recognize beyond all doubt and acknowledge assuredly that God has made him, that's Jesus Christ, both Lord and Christ the Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Well, um, I'm not sure who crucified Jesus at this stage, but we know that God was in there and God allowed him to be crucified. We can say the leaders of the Jews turned him over to the Romans. We can say the Romans crucified him. But really, we're the ones, our sin was the one that crucified our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And who is Jesus Christ? Peter tells us he is, Jesus is Lord and Christ, the Messiah. And scripture tells us that he is God the Son incarnate in human flesh. He came out of heaven, took on human flesh, and came to us as our Savior as the revelation of God. And as such, he is to be heeded when he speaks. He is to be our teacher. He is to be our guide. He is to be our role model. And the Christian life is one where we give supremacy to Jesus Christ. Every thought should first of all be passed through the mind of Jesus Christ. Everything we do, we should first of all go to Jesus Christ. And ask his permission to do it. I know we have the power to do what we want to do, but if we belong to him, if he's our leader, he's our guide, we should go to him and submit all that we do to Jesus Christ. Not only is Jesus Lord of 
Peter says, but he's also Christ, the Messiah. The promised one in the Old Testament, all the prophets predicted that he would come. Jacob predicted that he would come. David predicted that he would come. All the prophets pointed to Jesus Christ, that he would come in the fullness of time to save us from our sins. So what does Jesus Christ expect of us? He came, he did this for us. What does he expect of us? As Peter preached, the anointing of the Holy Spirit was so powerful that 3,000 skeptical people who heard this Galilean and, you know, at that time, it's like uh, the Yankees hearing the Southerners and the Southerners hearing the Yankees. They were, you know, really not too impressed with Galileans, so they were skeptical and they, they were sort of weary of this man speaking. But as he spoke, something happened. The Holy Spirit got a hold of his words and changed the hearts and minds of 3,000 people at one time. The cloven tongues of fire came on the heads of the disciples. They came on the heads of all these people. And they heard this, this, this preaching in their own language, and they cried out, What should we do? And today we have the same situation. What should we do? We have to ask that question. What should we do with Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus Christ? And what does he expect of us? Well, Peter gave us two clear words of instruction. They were, repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized. Now what is repentance? Repentance is a wonderful gift from God that enables us to make right with God. You see, we're going along our own way this way. You don't have to teach a child to be rude or to be greedy or anything. We're born that way. And we're going along trying to get everything from me and we reach God and God speaks to us and we decide, you know what, I've been going the wrong way. I'm going to go the opposite way and I'm going to go towards you. And we say to God, God, I am sorry I have been living for myself rather than for you, and living for your people. Because God comes to us in community. Not very often does God speak to one person. God speaks to us in community. And God speaks to us so that we love God, so that we love our community. We say to God, please forgive me. I will turn my life around to serve you and you alone. And I will do the best I can for my community, the community of God's people. So Peter says, but be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, he said that because the Holy Spirit had just come and he was very familiar with Jesus Christ. But later on, Jesus Christ would tell us, be baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But Peter said, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you only do that, it's fine. That's fine. In baptism, we identify ourselves with Jesus Christ. That ourselves, our old selves, have died, and crucified, and buried with Jesus Christ. And just as Jesus Christ arose from that tomb on that first Easter Sunday morning, we too become new creations, new creatures in Jesus Christ. We become new people. We become children of God. So who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is God, the Son, the second person of the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is God incarnate. He left heaven and he took on flesh, human flesh, like you and like me. So he became incarnate in human flesh, 
And he came to this world to suffer and to die for you and for me and for our sins. And the Bible tells us that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but will have everlasting life. And what is everlasting life? It's something that happens the moment I receive Jesus Christ by faith. I become a new creation. I become a child of God. And now I know I will live forever in the presence of a loving Savior. I have someone who will walk with me there I go. I have someone who will guide me and take care of me. So who is Jesus Christ? He is God, the Son, the second person of the triune of God. And what does Jesus Christ expect of us? That we will obey His commandments. Remember, before He came, there was no love. I know we could say we love our dogs and our cats and our whatever, cows and our farms and our houses. But that's not the kind of love He's talking about. He's talking about agape love. And He says, I give you a new commandment. 2,000 years ago, we got a new commandment. To love one another as Jesus Christ has loved us. So we are to repent and be baptized. And what should we do? We have to follow Jesus Christ. We have to repent and ask him to come into our hearts. By us. And we have to take his new commandments to love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. Uh, turn with me in our criminals in 881. Let us repeat that together in 881 as we stand. Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and descended at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From whence we shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please repeat our prayer of thanksgiving in the bulletin. Prayer of thanksgiving. Together. Gracious God, you have 
blessed, may this offering be blessed. May it be used to the glory of God Almighty and for the whole world. Please turn with me to uh, page 13 in your hand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of you. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. In union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By our Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast of his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, a lot of glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. According to Luke, on the night in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he raised it to his Father. He broke it, he blessed it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When we eat the bread, we now share the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and he raised it to his father, and he blessed it, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of you. When we drink the wine, we not share in the shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take, eat, feed on him by faith in your hearts by thanksgiving. Thank you. 
Body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, take eat. Let's commune together. Let our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ let us commune together. Thank you. 
your bulletin to our benediction. And we repeat that together. May Christ God be with you this day, to live in the enduring word of God. May Christ God lift you up and guide you, that you may go forth to transform the world. Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now and forever, and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen.